The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in the podcast belong solely to the hosts and not the hosts' past, present, or future employers. Hello, everybody. This is Brian from Breaking Down Security. This week is part two of our discussion with Dana Akaki on mergers and acquisitions. We're uh, going to go a little deeper this week. Uh, some of the things we're going to talk about is knowing how to find talent in the acquired organization. Uh, that, that works for you in two ways, by finding SMEs that may be working uh, with specific technology stacks that your company may not have skills in. Uh, may also help you, you know, work out headcount and, uh, you know, if you do any right sizing on both sides of the org, you'll know uh, which people to evaluate and which ones to keep. Red flags to look for when uh, hearing from management. You'll hear some specific uh, terms that Danny mentions uh, during our conversation as uh, as things that uh, maybe you should look out for. Or, um, you know, maybe, maybe you should know, you know, when, when, you know, when things aren't going so right, or maybe when things are going so right, uh, when it, uh, you know, when you might want to bring in third parties to assist in making your m and transition easier, uh, might be a pen test company, might be an auditing firm or a compliance firm, um, might be a, a company, dis, uh, you know, specifically created, uh, for, you know, making mergers and acquisitions, uh, easier for orgs. Um, also, bringing in a third party can uh, assist your team in not having to spend as many cycles, uh, which uh, if you're in a very heavy operations-based uh, organization, taking that time away may actually uh, hurt your own organization. So having a third party coming in may help, might be helpful. Also, uh, we talk about social engineering attacks and security type attacks that bad actors uh, might engage in, uh, either from your company or the, the acquiring company. Uh, that uh, might cause issues or might give them additional information that would uh, give them an edge on stock price or uh, filings for, you know, the SEC or or something like that. So there's a lot of good information this week. Uh, Hope you enjoy. And we're going to get right into it right now with Danny and uh, Ms. Berlin, Mr. Betcher, and myself. Have a great week. I I think the other thing to think about is you want to get in there as soon as the M&A is announced and that they'll let you because... If there are talented people working at that organization, uh, they know they know where the wind is blowing, so they'll automatically start you know brushing out their resumes and start looking for you know new jobs. And the talented people are going to get poached first. So if you get in there six eight months later, you may not have the same skill sets or knowledge you know found repositories uh, you know that were happening because you know you've got folks that are either assuming that they're never going to get replaced uh, or you're going to have the people that, uh, you know, uh, for whatever reason, they, they, you know, don't, don't can't look for a job or can't find a job because one, they can't sell themselves or they're just not qualified enough to, to find new jobs. So, um, you know, you want to get in there, you want to like, uh, like Danny said, keep everything fairly positive, but, you know, be practical, you know, um, the, the, the ability to, uh, integrate these things is very important. So, um, so if you're acquiring a company, does the amount of work that you're doing at your current job, you know, if you're the company acquiring a company, uh, what does that look like? Do you have to halt stuff or does timelines, you know, Oh, we can't do this until we figure out what the company B is doing. Um, what, what is the, what is the, you know, what does the work look like there? Do you halt all work or do you not take on any new work and just continue working on what you're doing or any new projects there? Or is the M&A considered like the full all hands on deck project? No, I mean, and at least in my experience, uh, you know, it could go either way. A lot of the times, once that thing is announced, again, there are still uh, those like, uh, uh, upper echelon uh, things happening. So it could be business as usual. One of the common things in both companies, especially if you're publicly traded, is you'll see a hiring freeze, right? Mm-hmm. Like you might have you might have had headcount and then the next day you don't have the headcount anymore or the headcount is frozen. Uh, right. So that is, in my experience, one of the most common, if not the very first things to stop on both sides. Um right. If you are the acquiring company, you're probably still going about what you're doing. Um, 
uh, things might get shifted because depending on why you acquired this company, maybe you acquire them for their tech, uh, maybe something that you need. So maybe whatever existing projects you have that rely on that tech, maybe those get either, you know, not shelved, but like paused or, or, or reallocated somewhere. Um, but no, you're usually, you're usually just full, you know, you're still business as usual for at least a little while. It's, it's the headcount thing and that, that right. will hurt, especially if you needed that. Um, right. You know, you see that, especially in like in uh, devs and architecture, uh, especially if, if you're a product company, right? Cause you're a product company, you still got releases to meet. Right. And you have right. features to meet and things like that. So how does that get affected? Uh, you know, normally you're, just, you're still going to be working, except now you have to watch out for siphoning of those resources to something related to the M&A, which is something to look out for. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's most like it's most likely at least a headcount. OK. All right. Um, have you ever worked at an organization that's brought a third party in? Because obviously, Maybe you only have so many cycles in the day and you can't go over and talk to the IT folks. Um, I have seen, se there's several links in our, in our show notes uh, talking about bringing on a third party to help out with that, uh, to help manage expectations on both sides. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, one, one of the things that they said, oh, is, yeah, you want to develop a playbook so you can do this again and again. And I was like, well, why, why do have to develop your own playbook to do it again and again when you can have a third party come in that already has a formula by which they can do those kinds of things? So have you ever had an experience working with a third party that has to evaluate you or you being evaluated? No, I mean, for me, no, I, I, I've been, that's not something I've experienced with because like the, the, the acquiring uh, has been big enough where they they have their M and A department, like they have wow. things like that, yeah. Okay. Or yeah, so like they have they have those kind of things, and then and then once they have those those logistics down, you 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 know you have whatever your tiger team is or whatever from different like hey we need you to do this we need you to do this, I, maybe in some of like the 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 other processes that I'm not wasn't privy to like HR and, uh, you know, legal and things like that. Maybe they brought in some third parties, but as far as my distinct responsibilities, like, no, it was always us doing, doing the things and building the relationships and talking to people. I mean, I'm sure it exists. I mean, obviously, obviously it exists, but I don't have experience with it. Mm. Okay. Um, Do you have any, anything that you wish you would have changed earlier on? Yes. Um, I like 10 of them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I panicked. Uh, the from my first one that I was my first couple that I got uh, caught up in absolute panic. Um, like that the bank thing we acquired and then we got acquired. And I was like, oh man, I thought I hit my stride and now you know I got I'm trying to get married and blah 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 blah. And I definitely made some rash decisions about it turns out it was a good rest decision because it led me to security and this is like my calling so that's fine um but then you know i i definitely there was a there was another one oh here's a fun one we've talked about uh we've talked about m a as opposed to one entity purchases another or vice versa whatever how about how about being a part of a giant company call it Sh me -E, um and you are in one of their practices and they start divesting business units. They say, we are okay. no longer in these verticals. Okay. We are no, we are no longer. And, and that's one of the verticals that they are mm -hmm. divesting is yours. And then okay. you hear do what's best for your family. And uh, your family is about to grow because your wife is pregnant. So then what do you do? How do you not panic? Um, even though you told yourself in the first two times to not panic, this is a different kind of panic. So there are several kinds of panic, as we all know. So, um, but yes, now I take a much more pragmatic view of it. It's, I, I take the, it's, it's, it's nothing till it's something. And even when it is something, I have been preparing, even in, you know how we all sit back and we have imaginary arguments with people and you wish you could say this thing to this person and you're planning to say this and blah, blah, blah. I do that with my jobs. So I'm always prepared for these things now. Like when the one company came in and acquired my company and then they said, everybody gets a job. But then three months later, my job's not about to exist anymore. 
And do you then try to beg for another job within the company? Or do you take the money and run knowing you're secure? You can go find another job elsewhere. I, what did you do? You said you, you made a rash decision, ended up being okay. What was the rash decision? Oh, uh, when, uh, so that was when things were getting divested. I, I ran. I, I was like, and so this company had moved my, my wife and I from Pennsylvania to New Orleans. So we moved for this job. And they moved us down there and they gave me sign on and they paid for movers and blah, blah, blah. And nine months later, uh, I suddenly had a very unsure future. Nobody was giving me answers. And I just interviewed and I got a job back in New York and I left. And, of, and then, of course, it was less than a year. Um, and, and the only reason we did that is because we didn't have we didn't have support system all, all the way down south. We had support systems in the greater Northeast. So that's why we went home because none of us knew how to raise a baby. Like, we're like, we'll probably be okay with a baby, but just in case, let's go home. Um, so that was a rash decision. I mean, and it turns out everybody on my team stayed for like a whole nother year. I probably could have like waited that out a little bit, but there was very, there were some very certain circumstances that we were not comfortable with. Um, and then that ended up being like, oh, you left before this was a whole thing too. A little side war story is, as I mentioned, they paid for us to come down there, got a sign-on bonus, nine months, nine months wasn't a year. So that, so then they said, well, it's unsure. So you won't have to pay that back. And I said, okay. But then my exit interview came and she's like, do you have a check for us? I said, what the hell do you mean you have a check for you? Like, oh, you have to pay back your moving. You have to pay back your expenses. And I was like, the hell I do. And to this day, five, how old is he now? five, five years, five and a half years, they ain't getting a dime because I said, listen, you guys said you, you, my job wasn't guaranteed. And this HR person had the gall to say no jobs are ever guaranteed. I almost jumped across the desk. Uh, she so, sounds delightful. Oh, oh, that's a whole nother show, dear Brian. Um, <laughs> so, but anyway, that's a very I'm long. Sorry, I shouldn't stereotype. It could have been a. Uh, oh a no, no, non, no, no, no! It's person. fine. She, it was. It was. Yeah. No, she was not nice. Um, and then she was talking about loyalty and stuff. And then two months later, oh, she yeah. left too. So, ha ha. Um, but anyway, that's a very long-winded way of saying the one thing that I wished that I had maybe not done. I mean, everything ended up okay. Obviously, I'm sitting here talking to you, um, right. and this is like one of my. This is a highlight for me. Always is. Uh, but think a little thinking think a little slower right like at least slow it down look at all of the moves anybody who's ever played chess knows to look at the entire board and sometimes right. you have to move the piece one spot not all the way up the board planning for the next seven it's exactly like that there's a reason chess really is a game of kings i highly recommend it to everybody mm -hmm. cool. very long-winded answer i'm sorry no it's all good it's all good um <clears throat> So I've, I've been on a third party uh, or have been, had known a third party and it was a pen testing company, not the one I'm at currently, but a uh, pen testing company that had to come in and look at a company that was being acquired uh, to see if their organization sucked uh, or if they, you know, their product was okay because there's a trust thing there. Uh, and, and, you know, before we started recording, I mentioned that, uh, you know, finding out that a company has been breached can often cost them millions and millions of dollars. Like when Verizon bought AOL or not AOL, but Yahoo um, during their m and period, they were found to have been breached and it actually affected the cost of the acquisition by $350 million mm -hmm. uh, or 7% of the value of the, of the original. Um, so, uh, you know, having these brought in and, and, and being able to, you know, test this is, is definitely uh, something important. Um, one of the companies that I worked, uh, I worked for previously when we were, um, uh, one of our customers was getting um, acquired and they ended up, what was it? They ended up suing the old board of directors for the company they acquired because their state of security was so bad. Oh and they lied about it for the acquisition. There are all manner of sins that get uncovered later. Oh, yeah. And yeah. especially when there's money involved, like those things have a very long shelf life. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I, I mentioned the other thing about, get, about me having to pay back the money. I still get a call once a year. Yeah, they don't, uh, you know, they thought, but yes, those, once those skeletons are on earth, oh boy. Yep. 
Yep. Um, wow. Yeah. So um, I, I think the important thing as a, as a conquering company is to, is to, you know, know what you're looking for when you're, um, you know, uh, needing to talk to people, like Mr. Betcher said, pro policies, processes, um, you know, configuration management is important, uh, how they're doing business. Some of these organizations, you're going to find that they're not, not doing business well at all. Uh, uh, not just from a, not just from an IT or security point of view, but, um, uh, you know, from a project management point of view or a product development point of view, they may just be flying by the seat of their pants. Um, you know, I want to talk about the security side of this. Um, I saw some articles saying that, you know, you have to let your people be aware that they could be the subject of social engineering attacks, uh, especially the acquiring company is like, oh, look, you know, we're being acquired by X, click here to figure out what your benefits are. And um, have, have you ever, Danny, I know Danny has worked at uh, security companies before, but um, security companies are probably the worst for falling for this kind of shit. So um, what, uh, have you, have you ever seen anything like that where people have either done phishing tests or there's been, you know, some social engineering attacks that, uh, were launched because somebody found out they were being acquired or, or were, um, you know, involved in the inquiring. Yeah. I mean, you see it all the time. As, as soon as that announcement gets made out to the world, uh, I mean, not, not for nothing. A lot of these are, are a lot, a lot of these attacks on with, with, with social engineering are, are crimes of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. So um, I would not be surprised if there are people that actively troll, uh, you know, looking for uh, those kinds of um, announcements. But no, it's definitely something to be aware of. There was just an article not too long ago, not necessarily related to like M&A activity or whatever, but uh, it had to do with um, uh, I forget which company it was, but I, I roasted them on Twitter. Um, their phishing campaign talked about giving Go people. Daddy. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, go yes. daddy. That's right. I remember and, that. Oof. And their Dad fishing daddy. campaign was here's the information on, on your bonus because of, because of COVID and things like that. And then it turns out it was a fishing campaign. Yep. So that's a particularly craven, especially, and it wasn't even an actor. It was a company that had paid, like, I'm, I'm not sure if it was go sure daddy. Pay that, like, yeah, sure. That works. Like if, and if a bad person is doing it, yeah. that's one that's, thing. Yeah, yeah, that that is definitely something that maybe, but you know, what I have seen with that is not paying enough attention to it. Like you think the M and A is the M and A, and then things, whatever, and then maybe there's not enough emphasis put on, like, hey, any merger or acquisition is a very vulnerable spot. It is. I don't care how big the deal is and billions of dollars or whatever. It is a very transition is always vulnerable. It is because it is new and. Right defenses are either let down intentionally or, or unintentionally. So any in that those miscreants have look I'm talking to you snow, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I, I, I can absolutely see that. Uh, and, you know, have seen stuff like that. Now, I, you know, people will also, especially if you're paying people to do these fishing campaigns for you, maybe you chill on that for a minute like you got enough to worry about doing right. the actual merger let's not do some some screwy stuff in the middle but that just means there's more opportunity for the actual bad people to come in uh and and do that you know and yep. then and then suddenly the bad guys have eyes they'll sit they'll sit and they'll watch they have eyes into this whole merger thing and then that's they're in so yeah absolutely it's a risk yeah, and and the the problem is, and I've I've got a link in the show notes to uh, talking about how hackers are using spear phishing. When you go to acquire somebody, you ha and your publicly traded company themselves, you have to file with the SEC that you are wishing to acquire this organization. And if that company is publicly traded, they have to go, oh, we're being acquired by blah, blah. So those are publicly accessible files that can be searched for. Um, only reason I know about some of this is because I. Where I worked at a company that went IPO, and you could actually search the SEC filings for uh, their 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 filings for for becoming an IPO. And I found other things that were going on as well um, that were public knowledge. Uh, and using that information and a little you know LinkedIn and a little Googling and a little OSINT there, you could potentially spearfish people asking them questions about uh, you know the M and A stuff um, or you know 
setting them up for failure by, Hey, you know, we, we noticed you're, you know, doing an M and a click here to, you know, understand what, what is going on in your organization. You know, here's a, here's a seat, here's a, here's a PDF of the announcement from our CEO click here. And you're opening up a PDF that's got a shell in it or something uh, from a, from, you know, with a fake PDF. So I think communications is important. Uh, if you're going to do that, I think even before you file, uh, you know, management, if you're, if you're a leader in an organization or you're, um, you know, so, some of the people that listen to this go, well, I won't even know until five months later when I'm, you know, being told or I see it on Twitter or something. But uh, if you're a senior leader in the organization, I think communication and ways of communicating the M&A is going to be important. Uh, you know, uh, you know, mark the marketing team is or the PR team, the public relations team is going to be uh, the the single point of truth. So if you get something from you know Joe Bob Billy at you know legitnewsorg.com. Uh, you know, don't believe it, don't click on it, you know, uh, put out that kind of information ahead of time. So that way, uh, you know, people will understand or, you know, you know, please send, you know, to fish at or whatever you have in your IT organization, if you've gotten information about that, at least in the next year or so, and know that all communications official will come from, you know, M and A at, you know, your PR firm or your, your internal company or your, your, your head of HR or something like that. Um, having, having your, your coordinating those communications at a time, I think would, would cut down on any kind of issues there. And, um, you know, just to, just to tell people that, Hey, you know, don't, don't tell your, you know, uncle Jim Bob that, you know, it's going to happen because the company that's acquiring is going to have a bump in stock and the company that's going to be acquired, you know, the stock is going to drop or raise. And if people are shorting that, then that can be found out as well. So, uh, you know, don't tell your aunt to buy hundred shares of stock in your company, wink, wink, because, you know, you could end up in club fed or something like that. I mean, hundred is not a lot, but you know, um, a hundred is still a hundred charges or, you know, a, a, a felony or whatever. So, um, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I can give one actual example of how this would go down caveat. I am not a professional social engineer. I've studied it a lot. I am not a snow. I am not a Jason Street. But here is my one experience of this actually working. Uh, at DEF CON 25, I took part in the um, SECTF, the Social Engineer Village. Just to give you an idea of how this might go down, had I found out that my company, which by the way was Nintendo, um, that I got assigned, um, had, had I found out that they were going through some kind of acquisitions or whatever, I would have absolutely used this. I got in the booth. I found out their, I've, I've, I called their support phone numbers, got a hold of a support person and said, uh, Hey, this is so-and-so from it at their corporate center up in uh, Seattle or whatever. And said, uh, Hey, we saw, you know, there was, uh, there was some weird network traffic and we're just calling to check up. Um, could you tell me what you see in your system tray? Uh, we're just trying to get our system straight or things like that. And they're like, oh, yeah, well, I, there's a little M with a shield. So now I know you run McAfee. And now I know what VPN you run. Now I know what your work schedule. And it was so easy just in that pretext of being with IT. And I had OSINTed uh, their, uh, th their, some, some of their IT people on LinkedIn. So I knew a name. I knew, and this was all, this, this is stuff you could find within, 15, 20 minutes, depending on how open the company is. So imagine taking that, that worked instantly. I got like seven flags in a minute from this one person. Nice. Now imagine waiting a bit after an m and and now these announcements have gone out about you might be hearing from a new IT person or you might be hearing from this. Like imagine how, how even easier that would be if you couch this with like, oh, you're going to be hearing from somebody. And you hear from somebody, it's not the real person. So that's just my my one experience actually doing a uh, vishing thing for a contest. I'm sure there are professional SEs out there that have much better stories than that. Just an example of how this might go down. Right. Yep. And uh, you know, it, it's not just uh, you know phishing and in, in, in disclosure of the M and A, but you know, you could have data breaches. Uh, you know, uh, one of the one of the other things during the integration or, or the change in IT is let's say you have to put in firewall rules or, you know, change VPN locations and somebody fat fingers in a configuration wrong. Now you've got logs being sent to China versus your, you know, your, your newly company acquired, you know, SIM system or something like that. Um, so, um, you know, you, you run the risk of doing data breaches if you're not doing everything right. Um, there's a, 
I, I have another link in the show notes for Info Security Magazine about uh, they they mentioned this the 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 phishing stuff, but they also mentioned you know risking of a data breach because the amount of data sharing increases dramatically between the organizations. So you know you might have somebody email, oh yeah, my email's broken, send it to this Gmail account or or something like this. You know, oh yeah, I, I you know my 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 policy you know. My, my email inbox is full because of all this stuff. Ha ha. Send it to this, you know, at Gmail account or something like that. <laughs> um, so I, I, I think a rules of engagement when you're working with IT or, you know, working with, with folks like that is, is important. Making sure that, okay, all official communications is going to be done. Any documentation or artifacts is going to be uploaded to a OneDrive or, you know, only this specific Gmail account and, you know, only people with certain uh, access is going to be able to have, you know, the ability to, you know, move files in there, view those files, um, you know, because artifacts may be important uh, for, you know, just signing things or, you know, uh, you know, transfer of ownership of licenses or, you know, license keys or, or something like that. You know, if somebody's got a, I don't know, an enterprise Spelunk license, for instance, uh, how expensive is that for an organization to be able to grab a hold of a an enterprise Splunk license? Um, I'm not sure how licenses work at Splunk. If it's a you know a, a key or you know if it's a something they have to download, but um, you know or or Amazon license. You know if you've got an Amazon account and the other co company has an Amazon account uh, for for AWS purposes, you know having having access to those things is important. So there's lots uh, of noise, lots of noise to hide in. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, uh, so from a, from a being acquired point of view, uh, what, what is the, what does the workload look like there? Should you stop doing any new work because you know that the acquisition of your company is going to cause a lot of new work? So, you know, let's say you're doing X, Y, and Z and they're like, no, 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 you have to drop everything and put two FA on all your systems because we require that. Um, uh, should, should you expect that in an IT or a security organization uh, uh, and, and maybe not take on any new major projects? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a decision that's made for you. I mean, and, and, and that, that's a big question. Like, for instance, I'll, I'll give another one. When, 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 when um, uh, Iceberg was acquired by Gigamon, it's two, it's, two, it's two different things. Like nothing, like everything that I had witnessed as, so I got there right when they got acquired, but nothing changed because they acquired us for what we had. And they, the only thing they did was they renamed it. It took them two years to rename the thing. So nothing really stopped there. Um, it, you know, it, 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 it kind of it, like, like nobody makes that decision on their own saying, well, I'm just going to stop doing this because like, who knows what's going to happen. That's right. going to come down from, you know, three or four rungs up. Um you know, as far as your motivation to do things like that might be different. That's something you can make a personal, <laughs> you can make a personal decision about. Um, but no, I mean, you know, it's like, they'll, they'll, there will be somebody that'll tell you from the upper ranks of like, Hey, like now your attention's over here or we're, we're scrapping this part of the project or moving right. this and doing this. Um, you know, especially if it's something like when we get acquired by, by Shrim Amazon, um, you know, they were just absorbing the tech. And at the very end, it was got completely changed at the end. So like, we we're still working, but in different ways. So it's a very broad, it very, it's, it's a long way of saying, eh, it depends. Right. Okay. Um, I think, I think the only, okay. So you said you worked at Iceberg, which got bought by Gigamon. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if you were customer facing in that respect, but yes. what, I mean, what, what did you tell your customers about, you know, uh, at Iceberg? Oh yeah, we're being bought by Gigamon. I'm, I'm sure the first thing the customer said was, well, how does that affect me? Yeah. I mean, so actually funny you said like, if I'm customer facing, I actually was a senior technical account manager, which means, oh, uh, okay. yeah. So I was the interface with the client. I was having bi-weeklies with them and, and all kinds of things. Um, and it's pretty much, uh, you know, I was always honest with them. And I said, listen, you know, uh, hi, I'm new here and you just got acquired. Um, don't worry about it. When there's something to worry about, I'll tell you. Um, you know, if there's something with the product, I'll tell you. Product teams uh, will stay the course for a while, right? Like, mm -hmm. especially if you bought us because, again, it, it's all in context. If they bought them because of our product, you're probably good. 
You know, right. you're, you're like, it's not going to change too much. Of course, it's going to continue evolving and releasing the things you might get into trouble with. And we did get in trouble with was, you know, what's in the new release. Like did enough work go into the new release and did enough features you wanted to go in. So I'm always honest with them. I'm like, listen, this might change. This isn't going to change. Uh, this will change, but I'm always, I always, especially if, if you are customer facing within your power and what you're comfortable with I, and what you're authorized to do. But then again, for me, I've been through this stuff enough where I'm like, what I'm authorized to say and what I'm going to say are, might be slightly different because I care about my customers. So if stuff's hitting the fan, I want them to know about it. But no, I just say, listen, like, this is a thing they bought us because they want to be more seen as more of a security company. Um, but the product's still the same. You know, I'm here for you. It's still going to function the same. Um, if anything, it's probably going to get a little bit better. So yeah, no, I, I will always level with my customers um, because I am working for them. Uh, mm -hmm. And if there's something on the horizon, because then you have to keep that sense of trust. You have to keep that relationship because when things at a year, do start happening attrition starts happening mm. like they notice those things somebody who they've been working with previously and now you're on a call and say hey how's so and so and now i will i hate having to surprise them so whenever anybody on my team left incidentally my entire team ended up leaving anytime somebody left part of my bi-weekly with my customer was hey fyi i know you've worked with so and so before They've moved on. It's not a it's not a huge thing yet, um, but I will keep them apprised of any changes, even if it doesn't affect directly affect them, because it's all about the aesthetics and the appearance of it. Uh, so I'm always yeah, um, but yeah, it's definitely something to be cognizant of. Somebody somewhere will say something of like, oh, it's better not to say something. It's going to come back to bite you in the ass. You really have to have a good feel for that about what you can and can't say. Right. Communication needs to be as mm -hmm. open and as transparent as possible. You know, obviously you don't want to be telling them anything that, you know, might, might be business sensitive, but you, you right. definitely want NDA, to, whatever. right. Right. You definitely want to uh, you know, alleviate their fears. Cause you know, if you were to lose a big contract that wouldn't look good on the company that's being acquired uh, you know, Oh, you lost a $3 million contract or, you know, whatever. So um, it, it would bite, it would bite your, your bottom line. So uh, Mr. Betcher, uh, I'm sorry. I've been asking a lot of questions. Uh, Ms. Berlin, any, any thoughts, anything, um, you know, there's so much minutia, I think in regards to these things, you know, you, yeah. you won't know until you actually get in there. So, but Mr. Betcher, go ahead. Well, I think um, if the acquiree company, um, resist from a security standpoint. They don't want to implement um, security tools for whatever reason. They just don't have the time. It's too much. It might um, impact their systems. I've, I've seen that so many times. We don't want another agent. You know, it's, it's going to hose our systems, you know, so, so stop putting antivirus on our, you know, on our servers or whatever. I, I found that a good red team does wonders because it kind of puts things into perspective when the acquire E gets totally owned by hackers while at the same time they're resisting security enhancements. If they're in a position to understand it. If they're in a position to understand what just happened. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think I think that's uh, that's interesting. So, Mr. Betcher, uh, you're working IR. Ms. Berlin, you're working IR. Uh, do you have you ever run into a case where you know the IR teams aren't fully compatible, or they have different visibility? I mean, Mr. Betcher, you said you've talked, you've you've worked with companies that have been acquired. Uh, did did they have an IR team, or were they big enough to have an IR team? What did that look like for you, and and having to deal with the, their monitoring versus your monitoring, or your methods versus their yeah? Methods? I mean, it's it's never that mm -hmm. compatible. I mean, every company is different, right? And so when you, as the acquiring company, you know, have to enhance their security, implement some of your tools, the the main thing is you have to say things like oh, we have a SOC, so you won't have to do all this monitoring yourself. You know, mm. we can offload that to them. It's going to be nothing for them, right, to, you know, uh, to take on 
some of your alerts right. or all of them for that matter. Oh, we have a digital forensics team. So if something does happen that we need, you don't have to hire an outside agency to come in and, and uh, perform forensics. We have a whole team for that. You know, so there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of benefit hmm. uh, to the acquisition, you know, and if you approach it, um, like Danny said, have those conversations, you know, you have to be open and honest with them. Cool. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, Ms. Berlin, anything, anything you'd like to add to that about IR or monitoring or anything like that? I mean, all the ones that I've had to deal with went from nothing to something. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. So like zero security department or very, very small IT departments to actually having something. Um, so it was mo mostly value add and they didn't really know what they were missing. And some of them didn't really know how to, how to handle what they were getting too. So yeah, it, that's, that's always, and that's what, that's why I made the comment on, you know, giving them a pen test during like they like doing that definitely could have a positive impact to, to getting them to understand why things would need to change. Mm -hmm. But in other cases, they, they might not even know what a pen test is or any of the ramifications of, I, it, it depends on like how it's being presented, I guess. Right. Um, yeah, I guess that's my, and then I guess the, <laughs> the one other thing I wanted to ask is, have you seen Silicon Valley? No. No, the show? Nobody. I heard yeah, it's I'm, good though. Yeah. All of it. Literally all of it. So like, did that give you flashbacks? Oh my God. <laughs> Having worked on two, two or three different product teams. Yeah. It's always a box. It's always a God forsaken <laughs> box. I don't know. I, I forget if you guys curse on here or not, but this is, this is the first startup that I've worked for. Right. And watching I, that, I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> it's, it's so it is so similar. That's why that show is so amazing. Is because we're like, oh yeah, oh yeah. That that's exactly word for word how these things go. Yes. Yep. Great. Your releases and oh, highly. I need to go check that out. Highly. Yeah. I can't believe you never watched it. Nah, dude. There's so many. There's so many shows. I know there's there, so many, but that's got to be in the upper. That that that's got to be on your radar. Man. I haven't watched Mr. Robot either. So. Oh, you're in for a treat. No, I'm good. I'm really all right. Really. Yeah, it's actually the. Uh, I don't know. I get turned off whenever people are like, "Oh my god, you got to watch this! It's so much great!" You know, and it's like, okay, I see the I see the vein throbbing in your forehead, dude. You're gonna <laughs> you're gonna die. I just, I it's that's one of those shows that I wish I could experience for the first time again, like like Breaking Bad, where it's gonna be awesome every single time, but there's that feeling of like, oh my god, especially like the final episode. Yet another show I have not watched. Why am I? Why are you the way you are? <laughs> Look, I got time. I'm I'm still trying to get back through Stargate SG One again. So, and I haven't there. even watched all of uh, Battlestar Galactica, the new ones. What? I know. See, there you go. I got made it through seven se There's seven episodes in the first season. Podcast. <sighs> it's what about the Expanse? Right. Nope, never seen it. Never seen it. I'm I I'm, I'm happy you made time. this revelation now. Because if you time. made these revelations at the beginning of the show, I'm not sure if I could have made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, so we're i think we're i think we're about done this is going to be one of those podcasts where i'll be out walking tomorrow and go oh damn i should have asked that question oh i should have asked that question you know what we know where to find danny That's i will drop everything i am doing for break sec anytime <laughs> i'll literally drop my child what well, oh my don't well don't do he's that he's got a really hard head don't worry about it like he bounces oh, okay hey bounce yeah. yeah don't drop your weights or anything like that either so uh, you know i drop them all the time yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm thinking about things like, you know, integrating products or similar products or whatever. And, you know, um, you know, I, I definitely think that there's probably a lot going on there that we haven't talked about, but, uh, you know, we'll leave that feedback for the, the people who are listening. Uh, if anybody's had any, uh, you know, product mergers where it's like, oh yeah, we're going to take this endpoint security solution and that endpoint security solution is kind of munge them together and see what happens or you know this logging solution or whatever or, oh hey you know we're elastic search and we're no longer free or you know whatever burn anyway so uh <laughs> danny uh danny uh 
how would people get a hold of you if they wanted to talk more about oh you God. know your what you do uh, as a at a at your real job or um, you know just internet in general and security in general? Yeah, definitely not LinkedIn. Don't look for me there. Too I, late. I, I, I check in like every six months and there's like that's eight where messages. Hit, that's, where I, that's where I hit on people at. Yeah. Right. It's a, Hey baby. Um, so no, uh, I am, I am on for better or for worse and an unhealthy amount on Twitter. So it's at, uh, the AKA CKI or as Lintile pronounces it to Um, that's how I pronounce it too. It's fine. I don't even care anymore. It's 40 years of me not bothering correcting people. Um, so it's that, uh, but also I do, my other pride and joy uh, is my um, Twitch streaming I do a lot of, which is uh, twitch.tv slash 2OC stream. Um, and you can see every interview I've ever done. I take, I try to take after break so I can do good interviews uh, or just general dumpster fiery type stuff you can find on youtube.com slash second order chaos. Nice. Okay. Very cool. All right, uh, Miss Berlin, how about you? What, what, what are you doing? What am I doing? Just working. But you got a nice house because of it. So. I do have a nice house now. I still, yeah. still putting, still putting stuff away. I worked in my garage for like four hours today and yesterday. Really? Uh, and it's almost done. Yeah. Um, be, you're going to be one of those people that put their car in the garage, right? Oh, definitely. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we got we got so many people in my neighborhood that park their cars on the street. And I'm like, I know you have a garage. I mean, I see their garage open. Ohio, and it's, cool like, it's either that or like I actually had to clean off my car when it snows. So, oh yeah. 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 yeah right. I mean, at least in it, the is, it is such a smug sense of superiority when you have, I have two carports and when everybody else has snow in their cars and you have none, you're just like, I'm so much better than you. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh, look at me in my non-icy car. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Peasants. Yes. Filthy heathens. Yeah, All look right. at you. You parked on the street. <laughs> oh, how gauche. Oh, goodness. All right, Mr. Betcher. Uh, oh, no, Miss Berlin, you're not oh, done sorry. yet. Yeah, no, you can find me on Twitter, too, uh, at InfoSister, I-N-F-O-S-Y-S-T-I-R. Excellent. All right. Uh, Mr. Betcher, how about you? You you obviously put your car in the garage as well, yes? Um, well, I have a carport, so oh, okay. sometimes. Right on. I, I used to park it in the carport, but whenever my wife backed out, she would hit the post, which is right down the middle. Oh, and we do it all the time. So I replaced my um, side mirror twice. So oh. then we just stopped parking in the in the carport, so... Oh yeah. goodness. Okay. Well, but how, I live in the country anyway, so it doesn't interfere with and, uh, traffic. You don't have snow. That's and that's I don't true. have snow. That's true. Except you have hail though. You, you have the rare hailstorm. You know, very so. rare. In which case, we'll we'll move the cars in. Yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. So, uh, how would people get a hold of you and uh, you know tell people what you're you're all about there, Mister Petra? I'm all about the incident response and. Um, you know, you can find information on uh, log-emd.com. That's my project. And uh, on Twitter, at Betcher Pwned, B-O-E-T-T-C-H-E-R, my last name, and then P-W-N-E-D. Very nice. Okay. Um, so uh, we are working on uh, a lot of things. We have our Slack uh, that is uh, very active. Uh, if you're interested in joining our Slack and having a good discussion with a bunch of folks who are like-minded uh, and, you know, maybe not like-minded, uh, you know, you can join us, uh, email us at bds.podcast at gmail.com, or you can hit us up on our official Twitter at BreakSec, B-R-A-K-E-S-E-C. Uh, <clears throat> thank you to all of our patron uh, sponsors and, and donations uh, from that. Uh, we have a tip jar. That's what we treat it for. Uh, you know, it's, it's the way that we uh, pay for things like hosting and, uh, you know, helping out with, uh, with other nonprofit engagements. As a matter of fact, last Saturday, I had an uh, officer meeting for the IEF, which is the InfoSec Education Foundation. And we are going to, as one of our first initiatives, sponsor uh, the Women Unite Over CTF 3.0. Uh, it is uh, being ran by Point3 Security, and they are uh, doing a, a CTF of sorts on uh, online. And um, 
It's to promote women and in information security uh, with an annual competition. So there are thousands, uh, thousand participants, hundred countries. It's going to happen on 13th of February from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, you can uh, go to, I believe, point3.net to find out more information about that. Uh, they, I didn't tell them actually that we were going to mention this on the show, but it, it's just really awesome. And it seems like something that, that, that they should get involved with. So um, yeah, you can go register over there. It's free. Uh, so you can do that. And they're, uh, they're doing various, uh, uh, various sponsorships there. So we're going to be supporting them uh, to, to do that. So we're, we're really happy to do that. If you have another educational initiative, you can uh, hit us up. I'm the president of the InfoSec Education Foundation. So you can uh, go to our website, infosececeducationfoundation.com. I, I know it's, it's a mouthful. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, talk to us and uh, see if, uh, you know, you'd like to help sponsor uh, further initiatives or, you know, sponsor the podcast or sponsor a local meetup that we do like CSEC East or um, help us out with our conference, InfoSec Campout. Uh, we're a nonprofit charity, so uh, any any monies you give us would uh, be gratefully uh, accepted. So um, have a, a store. If you go to breaksec.com forward slash store, you can get a t-shirt, a mug, masks, stickers. I know stickers are a big thing since we're not physical anymore in the, in the meat space, but um, I sent some over to our friend BSD Bandit uh, along with a t-shirt because he's like, I love the show. And I was like, oh, thanks. Uh, you know, and it was the least I could do for all of the, the good stuff that he puts out on Twitter every day. So um, you can go to breaksec.com forward slash Doran and check that out. So uh, yeah, uh, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. If uh, anybody has any other comments, questions, or concerns before we go, Danny, it's always a pleasure having you on the show and uh, you know, pleasure you're always welcome mine. to come back. I assure you the pleasure is all mine. I, I love it. I love you guys so much. Well, I, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, if you have anybody else, uh, you know, if you have any other you know, comments or topics you'd like to come and talk about on the show with us, uh, we'd love to have you back as soon as possible. Absolutely. Right on. Okay. Well, that was it for Break Sec this week. Have a great week. Uh, be kind to one another. Take care of yourself because uh, you're the only you you have. And we'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye.